Healthcare is losing a hundred million dollars a day and it's because of the hack at change healthcare four or five weeks now at the time that we're recording this so this is not fresh at all but it, the fact that it has not been resolved yet is also still a even almost larger concern change healthcare is the largest clearing house they are processing as you can imagine an infinite amount of data and what the fascinating part of the story is there is rumors that change healthcare paid a 21 million dollar ransom and it didn't work this one actually is horrible. It's not cool, but it's interesting. There was recently a, an office shooting down in San Diego and a dentist was caught in between it. It was at, it happened at the dental office. And I've actually had people reaching out, like my doctor's thinking about buying a gun and those kind of things, which I find fascinating. The movie of the year was Oppenheimer. And, and there's this whole approach too of like Barbie who actually outperformed Oppenheimer, didn't get like any Oscars, which is fascinating in itself. Isn't it just politics? Welcome back to another episode of Dental Riffs. I'm your co-host Gary Bird. I'm the founder of SMC National, where we help you create, convert, and close more new patients so you can grow the way that you want. My name is Tanner Applegate. I am the CEO and founder of Unify. We are a password manager and single sign-on tool built specifically for your office to make your lives easier. Awesome. So I am super stoked about today's episode because we got some really cool stuff. So number one, uh, the Oscars, I don't watch them, but Tanner does. So he's going to share, I, I, I can't wait to hear what he has to say on that. And then number two, this one actually is horrible. It's not cool, but it's, it, it's interesting. There was recently a, an office shooting down in San Diego and a dentist was caught in between it. It was at, it happened at the dental office and I've actually had people reaching out like, my doctor's thinking about buying a gun and those kind of things, which I find fascinating. And I know people are thinking that way. So that's something I want to talk through. And then lastly, probably biggest, healthcare is losing a hundred million dollars a day. And it's because of the hack at Change Healthcare. And the the hackers are Black Cat. And there's some really inter interesting information about that going on that you're going to, it really, this impacts everybody in dental, I believe. Um, so we'll talk through that as well. So which one do you want to tackle first? Let's jump in just just because it's on my mind. I, I really, I mean, last, Oscars were last night. We're recording this obviously right after the Oscars. Gary, I'm, I'm curious though, you're you're not much of a movie buff. Do you ever go see movies? Not really. I watch movies like way later and I watch mainly like kids movies and stuff. So so uh, the movie of the year was Oppenheimer, which for anyone that saw it is not surprising. I mean, it was kind of a big blockbuster, but the, uh, and, and there's this whole approach too of like, uh, Barbie, who actually outperformed Oppenheimer, didn't get like any Oscars, which is fascinating in itself. But then uh, just kind of in general, I think that I have this fascination for movies uh, because there's this story aspect of it, too. Right. And so as a business leader, I remember when I was in the as like my first like first two offices in, I had never been a manager or leader of people before. And all of a sudden I had like 30 employees that were really uh, relying on me. And this whole idea of like it's storytelling. Right. Connecting with people all the time is storytelling. I think that ever since then, it's stuck in my mind of like, I just look out for stories and the way that people tell stories. Like this whole podcast, we talk about stories all the time. Right. And the way that people like address them is fascinating. So I think that's where my love for movies has come in. It's like, I love the way that these people go in and tell stories and then add in the visual element. And so ultimately, I, I think that I'd, I'd love to hear kind of who are our movie buffs out there. Um, drop a comment. Let me know. I'd, I'd be interested to see kind of who we got listeners. Hey, got an important announcement for you. We are hosting the second annual Full Arch Advantage event where you learn to create, convert, and close more full arches so your office can grow the way that you want. This is going to be in partnership with BioHorizons, and this is our second year, but the important part is it's going to be virtual so you don't have to fly out, buy hotels, travel with your team. You can just register and block off the days and watch virtually. And right now we have early bird pricing. It's never going to be cheaper than right now. I don't even have a discount code because it's so cheap. It's only a hundred in $99 right now to register. And it's for your team. It's for your dentist. It's for your treatment coordinators, your dental assistants, and your marketing managers. And you're going to learn a ton of stuff to grow. Last year's event had a 74 MPS score, which is amazing. And the feedback was really, really good. So if you're looking at leveling up, we have a ton of new content, a ton of new automations and things that you can add to your practice to really grow. And we're going to be going over a lot around sales and executing on the phones to make sure that you can grow the way that you want. So don't miss this. Go to Full Arch Advantage right now and sign up. This price will not be around for long. Isn't isn't Oscars just like a politic thing though? Like I never watch them. I've never watched them. I didn't even know Oscars. I didn't even know if it was music or movies, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, so isn't it just politics? Like you said, like Barbie got the most views, but they didn't win because it's 
not exactly it's like politics it's like, amongst their peers but to me i think it's a better it's a more interesting thing from a peer perspective than it is from us because when you're in it you think differently than when you're outside looking in right we look at like my wife i sit here and she's navigating this relationship with our kids going to the dentist and the way that she perceives like oh this is a good dental office because of x y and z having been an insider in the dental industry i'm like oh that's not at all what you should be measuring about whether this office is good or not right and so I think that hearing these like uh, movie theater, like actors and producers and directors voting on each other's peer groups, it's definitely a popularity contest for sure. But there's also a, a different perspective than just like, hey, who gave the most amount of money to go and see this movie? It's a, it's a different viewpoint for sure. And, and honestly, some of the ones that like one of my favorites from the year was like Poor Things. It was an absolutely wild movie that like I have a hard time even recommending it to people because of how weird it is, but the way that they like told this completely weird story and tied it all together across this like journey that the main character goes on was fascinating to me because it was so different than like other movies that I'd seen. And they did really well on the, in the Oscars. It was like this nobody film that like didn't have any box office revenue, but it did really well at the Oscars because a lot of the people in the uh, industry really respected it too. Do you know my favorite? Have I ever told you my favorite movie? So this is going to tell you a lot. Oh no! Is it going to be like Godfather? No, no, no. Uh, Nacho Libre is my favorite. Okay, movie. that tells me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that. How many Oscars did they win? Zero. They don't even think they got a nomination. <laughs> what? Okay. Crazy. <laughs> You're one of the outsiders looking in, Gary. That's why it's your favorite movie. But that helps. That's okay. That's crazy. All right. I feel like a little kid now. Thanks for putting me in my place. Let's talk. Uh, do you want to talk about the hack next or the dental office shooting? Talk to me about this office shooting. I mean, why not go for movies and storytelling to uh, an office that got shot up? And- yeah. So, yeah, it was in San Diego. And there was a person who had a gun and they went into basically like an office building setting. That's kind of how I saw it or understood it. It wasn't like a strip mall. That It might have been, but that's not the way I understood the story as they told it on the news. And he went in and shot people in a dental office. Now I haven't, I haven't caught like the second wave or the third wave of news about this and what's going on with it. So I'm sure when people watch this, they're going to learn more about it. But the thing that was interesting to me is I had multiple people reach out to me talking about, dude, what should like, we're thinking about getting a gun or like we need to figure out how to have protection at the office, at the office level, which is not anything I don't, I don't think that's normally people aren't thinking that way, right? Like, no, for people. sure. Yeah. So um, I found that fascinating just, you know, that when it hits close to home like this, then we start thinking differently about protection. And and I started thinking about it like, yeah, I guess when you go to a dental office, like you're kind of a sitting duck if someone comes in and is a crazy with a gun. It's interesting you say that though, because when I was running my DSO in New York, we had an opportunity where we had an office like on the... I don't know, the 10th floor or something. And we were up for renewal of a lease. And so we negotiated hard during COVID where we were going to go get a full new, brand new build out. It was an old building, really kind of worn down. And our two options were like higher up on like the 15th floor or like ground level with like street access. And when we went and toured both of those, my partner and I, whose partner is New York, right? He is born and raised in New York. He thinks like a New Yorker, et cetera. I was like, and, and for me coming from Mountain West of Denver, Colorado, for us, it was like the gold standard was street level, right? You've got to get and get a lot of visibility, et cetera. And when we went and toured both of those, they were reasonable in price. And, and it, so there wasn't like a difference between the two. And he's like, there's no way we're going to do this street level because I don't want my front desk ladies sitting in the front being a target to these crazies that walk around in this area. Uh... So it was all about security. And he decided to go to the 15th floor. Yeah. See, in New York is unique like that, that you even have those options, right? No one, I don't, there's not many right. other places that people are considering being on the 15th floor for, for, for dental. So that, that, that is interesting. Yeah. But if I was in LA or something like that, hundred percent, I wouldn't want to, or in San Francisco, I would not want to be on the bottom floor for anything because there's so many crazies running around. Yeah. That's, and that's wild. Like I, as a mountain West dental group, like I would never have considered like, cause there, there was a, I mean, even here in Denver, we're not, a huge metro area, but there was an office that we looked at on like the 13th floor. And it was ex- funny. It's, it's interesting thinking about this now. 
it was me and my partner. We looked into it of expanding from New York back to Denver because I wanted to move back there. And he was all excited because it was on this floor. And I said, there's no way in the world we're going to buy this because it's in a medical building on this floor. Right. And so it's interesting to see the two different demographics, how like I never would have bought an office that was like on the 12th floor in Denver, but that was the gold standard in New York. And it's all about that security aspect. Like I know that I don't have that issue in high traffic, even in like downtown areas within Denver, like we would still want street level hundred percent for the visibility. Yeah. So interesting. Um, all right. So let's talk through this, uh, black hat situation. So I know you said that the healthcare industry is losing a hundred million dollars a day because of health to change health, which is fascinating to me. Um, because that's really just spread across all these practices and i'm starting to see it and feel it from these practices from a cash flow standpoint where i'm just hearing people like wanting to push things back and wanting to slow things you down are feeling it that's interesting yeah so can you can you walk through can you walk through basically what happened who's change health why does it matter and then walk through like who black cat is and then the ransom and everything that happened there yeah, so we're sitting in this story, what, four or five weeks now at the time that we're recording this. So this is not fresh at all, but it, the fact that it has not been resolved yet is also still even almost larger concern, right? So Change Healthcare, to kind of go back to the beginning of this, Change Healthcare is primarily a clearinghouse. It's owned by the United Healthcare Group, which they are an insurance company that owns a lot of kind of ancillary products and services for dental, or not dental, just healthcare in general. So Change Healthcare is is the largest clearinghouse. So what that means is when a medical building or medical facility submits a claim, it goes to a clearinghouse, and then that is then directed onto the insurance company that has to process that claim. And so they are processing, as you can imagine, an infinite amount of data because almost every single patient at some time has some type of information that goes through Change Healthcare and then onto an existing insurance. Mm -hmm. So from a targeted perspective, what happened, Black Cat being this notorious uh, ransomware organization, reached out, hacked into their systems, took all the data, left them with a ransom. And what the fascinating part of the story is that there's actually been a huge push in the industry. Like, if this happens, do not pay. Because the more that you pay, the more it actually incentivizes them to continue to do it. And there's no guarantee that they'll actually go back and do what they said that they would do. So there is rumors that Change Healthcare paid a $21 million ransom and it didn't work. So they got- What are we doing, Tanner? Why are we we working on the stuff we're working on? Why don't we just- Dude, I'm a nerd, but I'm not that big of a nerd. (laughs) Okay. I couldn't do that. I couldn't pull that off. Unless you know somebody, let me know. I don't. Not yet. Um, But it's crazy. So they paid 21 million and then they went and dissolved. They disappeared. So they didn't give them back any of the data. A lot of the times, like they'll give them back data in like this corrupted format or something, but they dissolved and they disappeared. And so Change Healthcare had, still is out $21 million with no no way to be able to get like claw it back. Did, and it didn't even solve the problem. Yikes. Heads are going to roll. Could you imagine saying, what, what do you think it feels like for like the CTO or the people on the, the security team of that company right now? They're, they're gone. They're already out there. You think they're already out. Um, what's interesting though, is watching this play out in dental. So ch- dental has three main clearing houses. Mm-hmm. So change healthcare is one of those, then vine and dental exchange and change healthcare's biggest relationship used to be with Henry shine. So all of Henry shines practice management systems were by default automating through change healthcare with a handful of other PMSs outside of shine, but primarily shine. And so. During this tack, though, Shine is already switched off of Change Healthcare, right? So within a week, they pushed over. I think that they're with Vine now, which has been the mother load for Vine and Dental Exchange. I'm sure they're loving this. But uh, but yeah, Change Healthcare, I imagine, will essentially just disappear from dental. I can't imagine them continuing to have any presence in dental. Oh, you think it's going to smash them like that? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Because their relationships is not with the individual practices. It's with these large, per, I mean, PMSs and they're gone. They're out. So uh, who ends up getting all this business then? Who's the winner in this scenario? In dental, it's Vine and Dental Exchange. And I think Vine more so than Dental Exchange, but I don't know for sure. 
It's absolutely wild, bro. What's crazy though to me is that it luckily dental was not hit that bad. That's why I was surprised to see that you have been you've seen the impacts of it. But it's these hospital units or these um, even pharmacies that the backbone of their infrastructure is built on change. And it's not like there's another competitor that they can switch over to. Mm. Those are the ones yeah. that are really losing out in all. Of I haven't, this. I haven't heard anybody say specifically like, Oh, I'm hit super hard, but I, it's just cash flow issues. You know what I mean? With people are like, uh, can I push that bill back or can I do that? You know what I mean? People and it, and I'm, my brain's just correlating it with this kind of stuff, especially the bigger, the bigger practices that, the bigger you are, I think, the more this is going to hit you, right? Yeah, Shine Shine delayed it for a week. And I think that they were kind of on par with everyone else in dental that needed to switch. Mm. And so from a cash flow perspective, it might be one or two weeks, but it shouldn't be too bad. The only bad thing about it, too, is that there are certain insurance carriers infrastructure that is built off of this change healthcare system where they're not able to process claims directly and so you have to like go to their website and stuff which is annoying but it's still possible crazy man all right well thanks for coming on today and talking through this stuff with me this was a good one all right chat with you soon